welcome to the Laughing Monkey Music Show. That we have Steve on from. You can announce your band. Wicked Come Smile on. in Australia. There we go. I want to... Come on, you got to be. Ah, Wicked Smile. <laughs> All right. I should be selling right. myself a little bit more, shouldn't I? <laughs> and, and here's why. And here's why I'm doing that. I'm going to put on the spot because it's actually in the morning for him, and it's evening for me. He's actually in the future right now, so I'm going to have him buy a lottery ticket for me. Or... That's joke. Right. <laughs> that a baseball game right yeah <laughs> <laughs> you got it you got so, it cheese man all right enough of those bad old, old old man jokes here so how are you doing man so you got some great music to come across and uh, i think i want to talk about it man i think i know i want but i want people to get to know you let's let's talk um, yeah i'm doing very well sean thank you things are going great for wicked small we're a, a, a very new band we've been together now for a little bit over a year and since then we've released uh, our debut ep called delirium and that was uh in may of 2020 uh, uh COVID time um but for us uh it's been a, a very productive year we've done a lot of uh, writing we've I think branched out in terms of getting people hearing us by making videos and stuff like that. So it's been uh, fantastic for a worldwide response in in many ways, where people are, have really taken a chance on a new band, as in us, we could smile, and, and that's probably the the upside of COVID. I know there's been a lot of negative and um, a lot of downside with uh, the way things are at, in the world right now, but for us things have been building slowly so apart from not being able to gig uh, which we are going to be gigging uh, next month in australia because things are kind of um, a little bit more settled so uh yeah it's been very very positive for such a new band like wicked smile thank you how how um how is australia right now for uh, covid is it pretty good where uh, with it sounds a little bit strange because we're we're in lockdown right now because we uh, have ha had the COVID, uh, the UK strain come into Melbourne where I live. Mm. And so they just want to get on top of it. But in terms of cases uh, compared to the rest of the world, much, much better. Um, things have been in particular for where we live in Melbourne, Victoria, we had a hard 2020. So we were in lockdown for about seven seven months really um, on and off. So it was, it was very, very tough, but we, we got things back to a point where for 30 days, you know, 40 day runs, we had, we had no cases. So they've been mm -hmm. very, very strict. So right now that's why they're taking a really strict, uh, harsh lockdown because I think there's something like about 14, 15 cases out in Melbourne right now, and they want to get it back to zero. So that's it. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I know. Right. I know. So I I'm know that my, I'm to, that my street. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know it sounds strange to the rest of the world. Right. But uh, we've worked really hard on getting it to zero. So no, it's good. Worked, it's good. It should be. Yeah. It's not a bad, it's not a bad thing. It should be. I mean, it's, it's the worst part is, 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 is the, um, how it hurts people financially and, and, and mentally and depression, but the lockdown itself makes sense why you, why you'd have it. So it's definitely, you know, definitely, no, yeah. it's definitely no win situation either way. I mean, it's, you know, Oh, it's, it is. Yeah, absolutely. It's terrible. I mean, we just had a, a gig um, canceled last night. We were meant to support an Eddie Van Halen tribute that was being put on and we could smile. we um, offered the support slot. And mm -hmm. so we were, really excited to to play last night but um a day and a half ago they said five day lockdown so what do you do you know that's rock and roll yeah. um, i so yeah health is number well, one i get it yeah, it is it is but so wow i'm surprised a year because you guys are really really good so clearly you guys have all been in different bands or together in different levels as seasoned huh. musicians because that's not a band that's been together for a year musicians <laughs> experience because you have a sound we were talking about some of our influences and you, i can really hear certain influences and certain strengths and professionalism and sounds and tone that a seasoned musician has. Yeah, well, um, for example, the singer Danny Ciccardi, uh, great singer Danny Ciccardi and myself, we've probably collectively released about 25 albums um, in the last 25, 30 years. Uh, so Danny previously has been the singer of Pegasus and I Fear. So you, you, you're kind of covering 
traditional metal there and progressive metal. And I've previously been a member of Black Majesty for almost 20 years. Um, I um, am still the guitar player of a band called the Radio Sun, which is more of a melodic rock type band. Previous to that, I played in a band called Cyclone Tracy. Um, so, and I'm also gigging with my daughter, um, Cassidy Paris. So yeah, w- look, we've been around and we, we love music. And uh, that's why we do it, man. We, we, we just love the music, love creating. So it's- Yeah, it's great. I mean, yeah. the singer's voice, and I'm gonna say this right now, I am not gonna ask any questions about the singer's hair. Let's talk about his voice. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, I just wanna put that there, but I'm sure I don't even wanna go there. It's awesome. <laughs> But he should, he should be making it. shampoo commercials or conditioner commercials, you know that's for sure. <laughs> it, I'm going to say, visually, it's awesome. But I'm sure it's such, such an easy journalist question. So I just want to... Yeah. <laughs> it's more actually, I brought it up loud just to harass you more than, than actually yeah, say... But, 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 to, but to, no, to say but, I'm not going to say it, it's just, just me being actually funny about it. Yeah, you know, yeah. The question. It's, it's, it's definitely... Time. It's definitely yeah, it's something that um, stops it's traffic, right. that's for sure. Um, yeah, but he's an awesome singer, absolutely. That's, awesome. that's what I want to focus on. I want to talk about his singing for real. I mean, his voice, yeah. who are his influences? I mean, I know who I think I hear. Who, who does he say he sounds like? Okay, or, so... Uh, what do you think? Well, um, I've known Danny for 30 years, so um, I've got a fair idea, and even in terms of just the way that we work together. He loves... Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, Bruce Dickinson, uh, Iron Maiden, Rob Halford. Um, he loves the band Sabotage, uh, Queensryche, um, yeah. Tony Harnell from TNT. Um, so, yeah. A, a any any Dio the, uh, in there? Any, any Dio in there? Yeah, he, yeah, he likes Dio. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we, we actually, um, from time to time in the studio, we actually... Yeah, we'll play a, a, a fun Dio cover just for, you know, just to get our own rocks off. So, um, but yeah, absolutely, Dio as well. So, it feels like yeah. he has a power, those are all powerful singers. Yeah. And it feels like he has a powerful rock voice. Um, Definitely, yeah. Something in his voice that I did hear, and it doesn't, and it's hard to put a, 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 I don't think he sounds like Bruce Dickinson, but I think there's an inflection he does every now and then. Yep. In the way he, he, um, sings probably from his chest or whatever he's what he's putting out the sound it's it's a similar style probably to put the power out there and and, um it's it's really good yeah it's it's like kind of sounds like it but doesn't sound like it you know what i'm saying yeah no no no, i I agree he sounds like danny so this is the thing he you've got all these this mash of influences and then you get danny and um like i said forever he's um, number one, he's just a, one of the best guys in the industry in Australia to work with because he's just so easy to, to work with. So mm-hmm. um, I've known Danny for a long time. And the way I actually really got to know Danny is by, I, I play, as I mentioned before, I played guitar in Black Majesty for many, many years. And the singer, uh, uh, John, is actually cousins with Danny. So, um, yeah, there's a connection then. And when... Um, I decided to to leave Black Majesty. I'm still very, very good friends with the band. Uh, we left uh, on good terms. I said to, and I asked John, I said, uh, do you think Danny would be interested in doing what I'm doing here with Wicked mm-hmm. Smile? So yeah, no, it's it's been great. Cool. Yeah, I, I you know, there's, like I said, we, first singers go, I mean, my last thing about that singers is, I can, you can name almost any singer and at some point in a song, you can go, that singer sounds like somebody else. Bar, bar, barring probably like Rob Halford or like a few singers, you're like, I can't compare to anybody. But yeah, that being well, said, I mean, he, he, he stands alone. So Dan, Danny is, is a very good singer. So, you yeah. know, it, it's it's great. Let's talk about uh, your guitar playing and your tone. <laughs> and uh, you, you, have your own, you have your own very distinct sound. Thank you. Uh, yeah, look, uh, for me, in terms of influences, it was bands, 70s and 80s in a big way. Um, it yeah. was bands like, uh, gosh, Kiss, Van Halen. Um, I'm sure, you know, UFO in some ways. Um, but it was it was probably bands like Skid Row and Dock, and that was my era in high school. So yeah, I kind of the second generation, uh, Queensryche. Um, but, yeah, guys like George Lynch, John Sykes, Gary Moore, um, I, I 
Oh, there's just so many. I, I love yeah, I, uh, I, guys from Tesla, you know. So there's yeah. um, Frank Cannon's one of the best guitar players I've ever seen live. You know, just buzz me yeah. out. Yeah, um, he's really good. Yeah. You're telling me, what do you, so what are you playing with, with your main guitar? So like you have a, you have a certain sound. Yeah. It's pretty prevalent. Um, I, I'm endorsed by Jackson Guitars. Um, <laughs> so I've been, yeah, I've been playing Jackson Guitars forever. And in terms of uh, my amp setup, I've been using using Kettner, the uh, Duotone Triamps um, for many, many years. And just, I, I'm one of those people who just, it's out of the amp. Um, I don't really, really use, I don't use pedals um, apart from a boost, maybe a wah wah or a phaser just for solos. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, man, it's it's all out of the amp, and um, I, I, that's what works for me. It, there's so many people who come up with their sound in different ways. So, um, and I'm a very old school. I, in terms of when I record my stuff as well, I record with a mic, you know, on the uh, quad box these yeah. days. You know, there's there's so many. You know, um, people are using a lot of different things to clone sounds. Where I'm, I'm very old school. You actually still use an amp and still, you, yeah, mic up my quad box. Very good. Yeah, I think a lot of artists can't get away with just doing a simple setup because sometimes it doesn't sound that good. You, yeah. you found the right combination. It depends. It depends on the player. It depends. You know, there's a lot of different variables. So to be able to just do a basic setup, is very yeah. nice. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I think some of it has to do with your ears and what you want to hear. And I don't know, I found for myself just by, you know, going to watch bands or you'd be surprised how much distortion I think some people think they hear. Yeah. Um, and when you record stuff, you don't need as much distortion as what you think. You know, I mean, of course, it depends on the band. I mean, if you're going for more of a Pantera, Dimebag, Daryl sound, that's a little bit mm. different. But um, bands like Judas Priest and, um, or, well, no, actually, ACDC, for example, there's barely any gain in, in Angus yeah. Young's tone. And when, you, when it's recorded, you, if you double up the guitars, it sounds huge. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, it's, tone's a, a tricky one, but I, anything that I like, I uh, tend to say, uh, like, for example, we're talking about, uh, enough's enough before and yep. uh, Frigo for me um, particularly on those first couple of albums his lead tone is so signature I mean yes he's influenced by Eddie Van Halen but it sounds like Frigo and yeah. uh, it's it's awesome so that having his style in a band that's heavily influenced by the Beatles I mean a lot of people talk about um, you know the, the brothers Donny and uh, chip but i think frigo had a huge part of that sound um whether they like to admit it or not but that's what i really loved i love mm -hmm. the the hard rock side that frigo brought to um enough's enough so yeah excellent you pretty much cleared that one up <laughs> <Very succinct. laughs> no, that's that's a, a, a bit right <laughs> no 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 it's actually going to be like thanks for breaking the fourth wall we don't talk before the show <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, man, oh, man, I, you're killing me tonight. No, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm really just enjoying giving you a hard time tonight. Ah, um, cool, man. No, no, that's cool. <laughs> Look, you know what's freaky, man? I'm also a primary school teacher. Um, outside of doing music, so I talk mm -hmm. a lot, and the poor kids sometimes are like, "Is this guy going to stop talking?" <laughs> Let us do it, man. Let us do the activity. <laughs> well, no, you're fine. You're fine. It's it's, a, it's an interview show. You know, when, when people don't talk, it's usually more painful. So, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, it's video, so you can't throw anything at them. Um, you would bring up touring, though. Like, and I know nothing about you know where, where you are. What, what like gigging? Yep. What's the scene over there? Is there is there a, a lot of places to play, or is it kind of? Um, it's changed over time. Back when I first started playing, and and I think when hard rock and metal was more pop, I know that sounds strange, but in no. the uh, late eighties, early nineties, right. it was it was thriving here, particularly in my uh, home city in Melbourne and also in Sydney. Uh, since then, it's it's small, but it's underground, and the cool thing is is that people still do support it. So, are we? playing to huge audiences no when we're playing in our hometown but cool thing is for example next month wicked smiles playing two shows and the first one sold out really quickly and the second one's um 
almost sold out. So, you know, that, oh. that's venues of about 100, 100 to 120 people. But that's cool. You know, um, that's that's where it's at. So we're we're far away from the rest of the world. We're an island, um, a, a large island. <laughs> but population wise, we're a new country and most people live on the outskirts of Australia. So mm -hmm. unlike places in the States where you've got a huge population, right? Yeah, yeah, that's kind of like the question as far as that. And a lot of anything, any bands nowadays that play with a guitar that's plugged into an amp yep. is usually struggling between a, a hundred yep. to a couple thousand. That's anybody, yep. any level, that's like, right. no matter how big they were, just because the size of the venues. And we're talking pre COVID because who knows what's going to happen afterwards. You know, the, the, the amount of attention is one of the things with this show is you know, getting the media out there. Like half these bands weren't getting the proper media or they didn't get indoors because yep. the next big thing, you know. Yep. And the fan base wasn't aware of it, you know. And so, I mean, it's, it, those are a lot of pieces of, of, of the pie. Um, before, though, could you actually tour or play around where you are and actually survive as an artist, or was it really kind of spotty? Uh, it's it's tough, but you could you could probably play twice a week, I'd say, um, and but uh, not not enough to give up your day job. No, I don't, yeah. I don't think so, unless. Um, you, you, unless you're Jimmy Barnes, Cole Chisel, or John Farnham, um, yeah. it's it's pretty hard. Uh, so, yeah, no, nah, not so, not not in Australia anyway. Again, yeah, it, it's got to do with the demographic as well. well that's because, that's why my question is: I didn't know if I was yeah. accurately assuming that or just, you know. Yeah. Well, well, when, when for us to to go to our nearest city like Melbourne to Sydney, it takes you by car nine hours. So whereas for you guys, you know, you might have been in another city within a couple of hours, right? So I, I, um, where I live, I could be in Boston or New York in two hours either way. There you go. That's my point. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's just different. And look, I, I, I love Australia. Having said that, I also love gigging around the world as well. So, I mean, I've been fortunate enough to, to perform and see, um, like I've been to the States probably about, seven or eight times i've been to to perform in the uk on a yearly basis you know five times so um yeah it's for us it's all about building things up and uh again most musos these days they're doing it because they love it um mm -hmm. anything that comes with it is bonus you know and uh i've been fortunate enough that most bands that i've played with have had um you know had interest so that that that's cool but uh, have I cracked the big time? By no means, no. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there is a proverbial big time anymore for for music on that level. Yeah. But yeah. You know, I mean, let's say I mean a lot of a lot of music you can be a hit single. Is it, you can be a YouTuber, you can be thirteen years old in your room and have a hit single, well, and the record right. label jumps on it, and you've already done all the work, so they're just promoting it. And so, I mean, how can you quantify against it? How can you? It's, there's no competition. It's it's, it's it is what it they grab it gravitates towards yeah it is and it's very very different sean because for example i mentioned before that like, i have a daughter who's just recently turned 18 and she's been performing as an artist since she was 13 and um her name's cassidy paris and you know she's a very old school it's more she's influenced by the likes of the elita ford joan jett pat benatar that kind of mm -hmm. thing so i do believe that uh, if the right person does come along, it, 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 you know, things can shift and it, it, it can just, you know, things can happen, definitely. Because, I agree. I, yeah. It's, I think it could um, explode again, but I I think it needs to, to, to build on a different level. I'd like to see a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of bands that, that we listen to that have new albums out. Yep. And I've had them on the show. Yep. And that's part of the thing is they are, these albums and these vocals and these guitar lines and these songs are just as strong. I think it's something even better. Than stuff that they put out in the 80s and 90s and then there's a lot of new generation bands yeah. like i'm talking to you and other bands yeah. you know that have music that no one even heard that fits perfectly with those it's more fresh music it's like there's so much out there and it clearly there's yeah. a market for it you know yeah. I, I don't think media can put a handle on it anymore i think really they don't know what to do with it they really can't you know record companies don't know what to do at this point i think you know i think like if something big like like an iheart radio or something has an idea of how to do the multimedia thing right now, but most places don't really know what to do. I don't think, you know. I tend to agree. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah, it's just different, and there's pros and cons. You know, some at, in some ways there's so much out there 
where you've got to sift through what's good and not so good. Um, and I think but people don't have to, they just, just watch my channel and they'll have a lot of good stuff. True. I and sift we, through what's good and bad. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. Yeah. As a, uh, I'm, just, yeah. I'm just harassing. There's a lot of good stuff. I know, but, but for kids, um, kids will always be kids. And in terms of the influence, it's the, the greatest stations in terms of what they're playing. Like, you know, that's what they'll be exposed to. So, all it sometimes takes is a DJ or a good A&R person to say, hey, you know, let's let's get behind something and then things can change. I mean, we've had, um, for example, a very, very different style, but I mean, we, we've had some bands become huge, you know, from Australia, which is, you know, you know, kids that are 16, 17 years old and that that's great. You know, I think that's, that's really cool. Um, Again, different genre, but it's it's what the, the the my kids were listening to. Like for example, a band like Five Seconds of Summer, they they man, you know, it just was so so big and um, good on them. I think that's great. I, I I wish there was more opportunities for people to um uh yeah for A and R people to get behind uh, young bands as well as the 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 classic bands as well. Because like we said before, if something's good, it's good. <laughs> So, right. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing is, I think with pop and a lot of those bands is they're looking for turnkey operations. They want, it's already yeah. done in a package. They can't, no one can be like, I can have three albums and work an album. This is a big thing I feel like I say all the time. There's no days of like, you can have, a, you can't do like the DB Brothers. You can't do like no. early Chicago. No. You know what I mean? All these yeah. bands that we listen to that build yeah. off of other bands or even, you know, Yes or Deep Purple, like they were, they, you know, the classic albums, they were just their classic albums. But if you look back at the numbers, and how they grew over the years to, yeah. to build a fan base to be like before they're huge like yeah. platinum huge that never Definitely. happened no never. no well, yeah like kiss for example i mean they didn't break until what their no. fourth fifth you know so um was the live, was the live album right exactly it was really right. a big, so, big break yeah and, 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 and handles are the few ones i think if we lean back like, oh you gotta make it big man handles one of the few bands that kind of did the platinum right out of the gate and that's when the the, the, the the sort of started happening i think more as an expectation yeah. Yeah, extreme case though. I mean, Eddie Van Halen changed the face of guitar playing, but right. yeah, absolutely. But having said that, Kiss, in terms of the look, I mean, I know they were influenced by Alice, uh, Alice Cooper yeah. in many ways as well. But man, talk about a marketing, you know, um, a marketing dream. And finally, yeah. it happened. And then, yeah, the rest is Kiss History. It's Kiss History. <laughs> that reminds me, I'm going to put down my Kiss coffin. <laughs> <laughs> that was for Jane. Oh, yeah, right. Um, so that, that's pretty crazy. So let's talk about your music, man. So do you yeah. write all of it yourself or are you, you co-writing it or? Yeah. Um, okay. So when I, when I started the band uh, about a year and a bit ago, I first of all was all about, I was just writing some songs for myself because I just, mm -hmm. as I mentioned before, I just parted ways with my old band, Black Majesty. And I thought I want to get back to that to the music that got me into wanting to play guitar. And it was bands like Skid Row and Dokken and um, Queensryche and stuff like that. I just thought, yeah, man, I'm going to do some of that. So I started writing some of these songs and I needed someone to bounce uh, the ideas off. And I'd been working with a good friend of mine, Paul Lane, um, who many people know from, well, he was a solo artist as well, um, but he sang for Danger Danger um, <laughs> for a little while. And, He's most recently in the band called The Defined. So I sent some stuff to him and um, yeah, he really liked it. And um, we worked on the ideas a bit. And so we started co-writing a couple of songs together and then it was time to, to look for a singer. Um, so yeah, it was just, that's when Danny jumped on board and then I kind of formed the band myself. I chose different people in the, the Melbourne scene that I thought would work. Mm -hmm. um, for the band and that I've known of and I always admired and I thought uh, let's put this together so it was very much something it was a selfish thing for me um, from my point of view but I just wanted to to write good songs you know it's all about good songs and I once Danny joined the band you, you can form your style around the singer and he's got such a, an impressive voice that it just worked right away so we recorded we fall about uh, a year and a bit ago we put it out on youtube the response was fantastic so in some ways releasing a single i guess if you want to call it that 
And uh, yeah, we just said, hey, this is working really well. Let's, this is a band now. So yeah. after that, we just kept on uh, writing and then we formed the band and then we put out the EP and the response is fantastic. I mean, we're, we're selling, um, I mentioned before that we've sold out of, of our EP and that was a thousand copies. So we did two, um, two press runs of that but we're selling t-shirts as well. Like, you know, like things that are just, it's pretty baffling. I mean, I know we've got a history. So like some people know what we've done in the past, but the, I think um, the amount of people who have really jumped on board is we're really overwhelmed. So that's so, so cool. Um, and we've only played a, um, uh, what do you call it these days again, like a show on, um, uh, a new wave of classic rock show for um, online, you know. So we've we've played one online show so far, but we're about to start gigging. So for a, such a new band, it's been overwhelming, really, in terms of response. Is that the show you're talking about? That was on YouTube. Just some, there's a show like like 15 yes. minutes. Yeah, correct. Yeah, that one. Yeah. So um, yeah, well, as I mentioned, we're about we're, we're meant to play last night, so we're pretty bummed out that didn't happen. But we've got a couple of shows coming up next month um but man the excitement is fantastic it's like it's it's real like a real band and uh yeah we just things are going so so well um i mentioned earlier that we've had a couple of offers from record companies but we're, we're, the offer hasn't been right yet so we, I, and i know this may sound strange to some people but we're better off staying independent mm -hmm. unless there's a good deal <laughs> you're not the first Sorry. person. To, you're not the first person to say that. And I mean, yeah. even if you, the deal, the deal would be better if it's just like a distribution deal, and you retain, yeah. you gotta retain all your rights. At this point, I would never go with anything. You know, yeah, just well, distribution man. deals. Yeah, yeah. Well, previously to this, in previous bands, um, I've signed off. You know, fifty percent of um, <laughs> of songs. You know, yeah. with previous bands and stuff like that, which is crazy. So now, I've, I've learned um, a lot. And um, unless it's and it, a good deal, we're not doing it. <laughs> and, and it would suck less if those if those songs made a real ton of money, and you could be like, you could 100%. kind of forgive yourself. But the yeah, worst yeah. part is, a lot of those times they get buried, and then you can't even use them because they're locked down. Yeah, um, <laughs> art is what it is. You know, again, it's it was a learning um, experience. But uh, having said that, back when I did sign um, the deal, if if that was maybe ten years earlier, we'd be you know, be signing a, a deal that was worth 200 grand. So yeah, it's, it, it is what it is, but um, yeah, man, the response has been fantastic and um, yeah, we're just, you know, onwards and upwards. So what's the next recording thing for you guys? Well, we're constantly recording. We've got two more tracks to record and then the, the album will be finished. Uh, so you put the EP on it too, because you said you're not doing any more EP. Um, Are you going to put yeah, those songs on well, it too? Like what it we, we, we don't know what's going to go on the um, going to go on the album from the EP yet. Um, at least three of the four songs, maybe all of them. But then again, I was doing um, I was having a chat the other day, and someone said to me, "No, nah, man, you got to put all songs, you know, because they all are killer and stuff like that." And I don't really like the idea of um, just thinking back when, when certain bands have not put on one of my favorite songs yeah on the album you know i kind of think it should have been on the album <laughs> you know so i don't know yeah. we're very we're torn but at the same time i want to keep it fresh for the people as well but now that the ep's deleted i don't know maybe all of them i don't know we're, we're still to think we're still yeah it's how come we're not going to do the ep uh, anymore how come we just shutting it down totally okay um well some of those songs will be on the album and it was always meant to be a sampler so um yeah so and i like the idea of you know it's a bit of a collector's item it's going to be a collector's item now for the people who you know supported us in the beginning so you know if we we put that out again that's another 500 also i don't want to be stuck with some cds you know either when yeah. when the album's coming out i don't want it to be competition i want it to be like okay the you know the band has their debut full length album out so and you know um yeah we'll see 
<laughs> I mean, I, I like the idea of keeping it exclusive on some level, but I also like the idea of like when remember when when, you, when bands would get big, you're like, oh, they had some stuff out there. You're like, oh, how do I get it? You know, and then you just like like Guns N' Roses would do like a split where they did like a live set, yes. and then they put that out there. So the first bunch of people that got it, it is still special for them because you've got the original like live yep. like a suicide or or, or yes. whatever it is. Yes, but then I know they did that, the acoustic. Game. So and then but then they had the acoustic on the other thing. Boom! Enough songs for a full album. People get the old songs. You put something new in there. Yep. It's good product. Yeah. Everybody wins. Yeah, that would be yeah. kind of a cool thing to do. You know. Yeah. A mix, well, like we'll see. We'll see. Something. Yeah, yeah, we'll it's, see. Um, but again, it just we'll have a band meeting and we'll just work out. You know, are we going to put or which songs are going to go on the album? But it's a good problem to have because the the thing is is that we are very very happy with what we've come up with writing wise. So, and that's one thing when when I started the band. I want it to be like there is a direction. Um, it has got its own genre now. If you're getting other people liking it, fantastic. But for me, it's a collection of, um, you know, it'll be a collection of 10 really good songs. And I know everyone says that, but I've done that and sometimes and um, previously and sometimes they're not, you know. Um, and you think they are at the time, but I, I look back and I think, no, nah. but I can really honestly say that with all four songs on the EP, I love all of them and all of them could be on the album. So, um, yeah, man, it's uh, it's going to be interesting. Um, but the, the response has been great, you know, and even from some, you know, companies as well. But, yeah. That's awesome, man. Well, I'm excited. Um, we're going to lead into the, the, the video. So you're going to well, send me up a video. We're going to play it so people can get a, an idea who don't know you. Sure. And then the links and all the website stuff will be below. Don't ask for the EP because you're not going to get it. But they have an album coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a couple of months' time. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you'll come back. We'll talk about the album. That's it. Cheers, man. All right, man. So I want to thank you for being on the show. It's been awesome. Thank you.